So what metrics are you using to define quality customer service and have those metrics evolved at all over time? So we take a look at a lot of metrics depending on what it is that uh, we want to evaluate. So obviously from a marketing point of view, we'll take a look at engagement rates, impressions. Um, but from a customer service point of view, what we spend a lot of time taking a look at are the same type of metrics you would expect from a call center environment, given that that's what we're trying to replicate online. So we will take a look at things like response rate, response times, and the number of uh, the ratio of outbound messages versus the number of inbound messages. And to you know a very great point that Lon made a little earlier, when you take a look at response uh, times, you know, the beauty of, of social is that the expectations are, are somewhat different. So whereas it's unacceptable for our customers to wait, you know, over half an hour um, on a, a call center, on social, you know, you as long as you can respond to them pretty early on, so we, we fix within five minutes as our, our target, and then being able to go back after that uh, with the resolution completed is something which, you know, we strive to, uh, to accomplish. So at Rogers, uh, what's really important to us is measuring customer satisfaction. Uh, so early on, what we really wanted to do was make sure that in social we were measuring on the exact same um, quality metrics that we would measure across any of, of our other touch points. So whether it was the call center or a live chat or in-store um, or an engagement with a field technician. Um, so that's our key measure. Um, and in terms of uh, evolving over time, we are trying to add some of those productivity measures um, that Mathieu was talking about um, to get a better sense of how our reps are doing. So do you feel that social customer service has actually improved or complicated your company's ability to just keep customers happy? Robin, I'm going to take a total cop-out answer and say it's a bit of both. Uh, the reality is it, it does make life more complicated, but it has improved our ability to reach out because we listen to the customers now in a way that we haven't necessarily been able to listen to in the past. Just the technology and social platforms in general just allow you to understand where your brand is being talked about and in what, in what context. So it's helped in that way. It's absolutely improved our ability to, to listen and to respond to people, be it directly or to actually change our policies or to change how we do things. But sometimes it can just be as simple as responding and that's, that's where I'd caution people who are just getting into it to think it doesn't have to be that complicated because sometimes it can just be as simple as forwarding people from the, the interaction that you're having on the social space to an, an FAQs page or to a little video tutorial. It can be that simple and just responding to them in that way and telling them where to go that doesn't sound very good, but responding to telling them where to go to get the information they need can be all that they need to be served and to turn them from, if not from haters to advocates, at least to make them more aware of the fact that you as a brand, you as a business, actually cares about them. I think I really agree with Alon in terms of um it's almost like asking the question of whether a baby is a compliment or a complication to your life. Um, I think that that the benefits are so great that you would never go back, um, but there's definitely hiccups along the way um, and things that are difficult. And, uh, and so you do have to learn as you go, um, but you will never regret coming into the space. So do you feel that social customer service is actually sustainable given the fact that we're all on 24-7 and the level of public scrutiny you're under? Given the 24-7 nature of our operation, we have to expect that this is going to be something we'll have to get into. Um, although currently right now we're not present on a 24-hour basis, it's something which uh, we definitely want to get into um, and uh, which we're expecting to be able to reach um, at some point in the near future. Um, so it's given that we're already answering phones 24-7, it's only natural that we want to do so um, on social as well. And regarding public scrutiny, uh, the important thing here is that, you know, we're here to be transparent and to show people and to educate uh, consumers on Air Canada on some of the things. Not every single one of our policies is very popular, so this actually works for advantage. We want people to see what we're saying to other customers and how we're explaining uh, certain policies that we have. So public scrutiny in a certain way works for advantage. It's giving us the opportunity to present our side of the story, which is not always an obvious thing to do in other channels. I think it's really easy uh, for the three of us to talk about 24-7 because um, we're already running 24-7 operations. Um, but I think that it can be a reality for any brand, uh, really, because there's a lot of uh, vendors that will provide that support to you. Um, I think it's the reality of the new social world, and um, I don't think it's anything to be afraid of, certainly. 
when it comes to 24 seven, obviously the news never stops and we want to take care of our customers. I wish we were a country like Italy where we only have one time zone. It's a lot easier to handle 24 seven calls. Uh, we're not, and it does make it challenging. We took a different approach when we launched this, and that was to be upfront and to say we're not here 24 seven. If you go on the Globe and Limited Twitter handle, you will see exactly the hours in which we will respond. And so we, we, and we got some credit, some flack for it, but we also got some credit for that. People's expectations change. We see when people are tweeting us, we see when they're not. So we really can only handle a certain volume. I'd love to say that someday we'll get to be 24 seven. I prefer not to use automated tools for this or not to outsource this part of it. I think it's critically important that people who are invested and live and breathe the Globe and Mail can actually, uh, are the ones who are responding. So I don't know that 24 seven will be imminent, but I think it could be down the road. So given your experience in social, what advice do you have for other brands that are considering getting into this space? The important thing to remember, I guess, is ultimately we're dealing with human beings. I mean, if we're, whether it's on a, at the end of a call or it's online um, or in person in front of you, it's still a human being you're dealing with. And, you know, there's common sense that applies. So really, I mean, you have to not be afraid of making mistakes. They'll happen. There will be situations that you haven't thought about that will explode. Um, and, you know, you've planned for a lot of things and all of a sudden you'll feel like, you know, everything is getting out of hand. But you have to keep focusing back on, you know, what you're doing is you're trying to help customers. You're trying to guide them through, um, you know, different processes. And if you can, you know, keep that in mind and take it cool, take it one step at a time, you know, um, if you're, if you don't feel comfortable, you know, baby steps are, are normal. You know, you don't necessarily have to uh, get into the sphere and answer every single comment there is about your brand under the sun. Um, you know, take small steps, take it one at a time and assume your mistakes. I mean, we've had, you know, examples where we've made uh, public mistakes online and we've turned it around uh, in such a way that people came back and said, you know what, well, that was actually, you know, yeah, you've made the mistake, but this is actually funnier the way you've, you've been able to recuperate it. Um, I think it's absolutely essential that you get buy-in from your leadership at the most senior level, because um, there are going to be scary moments, as Mathieu was just saying, and so uh, what's really important is to make sure that they've got your back um, and that they're going to support you, because uh, there will be queasy moments, um, and you need to make sure that they're along for the ride with you. Um, aside from that, you need to focus on your foundational elements, but there's tons of research that you can do, lots available um, to help you understand you know, what your strategy is, build it out one to three years or more even, um, and that's really where you can get started. You need to start with a really clear uh, foundation. I don't think there's anything that is specific to social that can't apply elsewhere in this advice, but I would say be prepared, as I, as I think we learned very quickly, is that a good process and protocol really helps. You obviously are going to have uh, uh, you know, reasons to veer away from that process from time to time or exceptions to the rule, but you got to be prepared up front. Being consistent, I think, is clear, and that's both in the tone and manner in which your team responds, but also being consistent in terms of the issues that you have. And then be legit, you know, be serious about this. So if you're going to say that, if you're going to listen, you got to actually do something with what you're listening. You have to take that into, turn that information into action. And so I would say, you know, take that part seriously of actually converting. I think there was great advice there that I wish I had six months ago, in particular the one about corporate alignment and making sure that you've got this, this um, uh, commitment from the top. But I think internally, don't, you know, you can't take yourselves too seriously when you're out there. And I love the idea of being, bringing in your tone. The one last piece I would say is just remember that it, whatever you do is out there. And so, it, you know, if you are willing to say it, it's just like email in some cases. If you're not willing to put it, if you're not willing to tell the person to their face, then you shouldn't be willing to put it into an email or a tweet or certainly not on behalf of the entire organization.